Back in January, there was a man who appeared homeless, walking up and down my street. My partner and I were outside working in the yard, so we paid a little attention, but didn't think anything of it. The next day, he returned and walked up my driveway, then camped on my porch. When we asked him what he was doing, he said he was going to fix this place up real nice, get himself a dog and some flowers in the front. We asked him to leave, to which he answered, No, I live here now. I have the papers giving me permission to live here. He then handed us a change of address form from the state housing authority, where he had changed his mailing address to mine. This was not permission to live at my home, but only to send his mail there. I should point out that, at this point, I didn't know this guy. I had never met him, and neither had my partner. We asked him to leave again, or we would call the cops after getting a picture of the form. I spent all day on the phone with the state housing agency, trying to figure out what was going on, but they had no answers. A week went by, and we didn't hear from the man. Then, I walked out to check my mail, and he was waiting at the mailbox. He opened it every few minutes, but the mail hadn't come yet. He told me to leave him alone, saying that it didn't concern me and that he didn't want to talk to me. He said he was just waiting for his check and then was going to go home, pointing to my house. I reminded him that he didn't live there and started dialing the cops. He took off, swearing at me the whole way. The cops asked if he was currently on the property, and when I said no, they said to call back when he was, and they would come out. That day, I also put a hold on my mail because I didn't know if he was stealing it. A few weeks went by, and strange things started happening around the outside of my house. My trash cans were taken to the street and brought back, my weeds were pulled, and my lawn furniture was rearranged but I didn't see the guy again. The cops offered to add more patrols, but unless they caught him on the property, they wouldn't do anything. They started to act like I was crazy because I called every day. At one point, the officer who came out after I found threatening notes taped to the front door asked me if I could prove that this person didn't live there because this sounds like a domestic dispute. We don't handle those. I started to feel like I was going crazy. After about a month of enduring this, my wife and I returned home from a late dinner with friends. Upon entering the house, we detected the scent of shampoo, followed by the sound of the shower and someone talking. We immediately left and parked our car at the end of the street to call the police and keep an eye on the front door. The police arrived with megaphones and repeatedly ordered him to come out of the house with his hands up, but received no response. They charged the front door and forcibly removed him from the shower. A struggle ensued as he resisted arrest, yelling in disbelief at being treated this way in his own home. From our vantage point at the end of the street, we could hear him shouting. When he refused to comply, the police tasered him in the front hallway and he eventually gave in. They grabbed my shoes from next to the door and told him to put them on and escorted him to the waiting police car. Once the reports were filed, we were allowed back into the house. He had smashed all of our windows and eaten the leftover chicken parmesan from the fridge. In my bedroom, my bed was disheveled as he had slept in it and my clothes were strewn about the floor after he emptied my dresser to make room for his belongings. The urn containing our recently deceased dog's ashes was on the table, and he had broken it open and scattered the ashes throughout my bedroom and bathroom, possibly explaining why he was taking a shower. He had also used an entire bottle of $90 skin serum and almost a whole bottle of shampoo. However, 
he had neatly folded and hung the towels he had taken into the bathroom with him on the rack. Fortunately, our cats were unharmed. He is currently in jail, facing charges of breaking and entering, assaulting an officer, and property destruction. I have been in contact with the district attorney and the arresting officer, both of whom have spoken with him. He is angry about being in jail and keeps insisting that he be released because nobody is watching his house and he doesn't want it to get broken into. I am still receiving his mail. This was November 2016 in Glasgow, Scotland. I was desperate, I must admit. I'd been single and alone for some time, and it was driving me crazy. That's when I met Laura. She came across as a very sweet girl and all, but she was in a hurry to meet me. So, I did. She insisted we go to the pub. No fancy dates were necessary to her. I didn't mind this. At first glance, I knew I'd been swindled. She looked different from what I'd seen before on her Tinder pictures, but I didn't mind. I was just happy to have a date. I'm not exactly good looking myself, so I gave her a chance to redeem herself. We got to talking, and after a few beers, things started to get a bit more intimate. Before I go further, she was quite an overweight girl with long dark hair, and she had eyeshadow similar to Amy Winehouse. She said she was a huge fan. I'd asked about her hobbies and interests, etc., but she asked me to talk more about myself. I told her about my job, and she yawned sarcastically. Let's talk about your sex life, she said. She had slipped her foot out of her shoe and started rubbing my leg with her bare foot. Needless to say, I was a bit aroused. Well, I didn't have much to contribute to that topic, as it had been a while since I had been physically intimate with someone. I was very honest with her. I asked about hers, and she said she has her kinks, and that she's done things that I'd never imagined. Want to see what I can do? Let's go to my place, she said. So at this point, I was starting to feel very drunk, which I was amazed at, as I was only on to my fourth pint. I did have two shots, though, and put it down to this. We waited for a taxi. She was holding my hand excitedly, whispering into my ear she was going to do some things to me that I'd never experienced before. In a way, I actually couldn't wait to just sleep. My head felt heavier than the rest of my body. It was like the ground was moving beneath my feet. The rest was a blur. I couldn't even remember getting into the taxi, but I do remember falling down the stairs, and she was above me, laughing at me. Come on, get up here, she said. I struggled up the stairs, and before I knew it from what I remember, I was in her bedroom, naked. It was like I blacked out. I tried to sit up, only to find myself tied to the bed by my arms and legs. Then she entered the room, dressed in bondage gear. I was deeply aroused, but confused at the same time. She performed sex acts on me before having full intercourse. I lay there delighted. Don't get me wrong, but something felt off about it all. I had dozed off for a bit, and I'd been woken up by a weird screeching sound. What are you doing? I said, as she was wrapping up my legs with cling film. Hush now, she said. This is the best part. I was no longer tied to the bed, but I felt very numb and couldn't move my arms and legs. She kept wrapping me up from my legs upwards. I was screaming at her to stop. She stuffed some clean film into my mouth to shut me up. I was struggling to breathe at this point and had tried my best to dislodge the ball of cling film from my mouth. Eventually, I was totally wrapped from head to toe. I could barely see outside the cling film. She told me that this was my punishment for being terrible in bed, 
and that she has many other victims, just like me, all wrapped up, waiting to die. She left the room, and I gave out some muffled screams. Then, I felt myself slowly fading away. I woke up what was now the next day, now able to breathe. This time, there were people looking at me. They'd removed most of the cling film and had resuscitated me. I wasn't aware of this till they told me. It turned out that I wasn't actually at Laura's flat, but an old-fashioned hotel. The police were all over me, asking me questions about what had happened. I attempted to show them her tender profile, but she had deleted the page. I am grateful to my rescuers that saved me, but I am forever traumatized by this incident, and I end up with panic attacks when I see people that are similar to her. It took me a few years to finally trust people enough to go on dates, but I am still on the road to recovery mentally. I'm just glad that I'm still alive, but wondering if she's still out there and if there are others like me that didn't make it. I am a 21-year-old female. This incident is a terrifying and yet another sad reminder that people of any age can be creepy and dangerous. So when I had just turned 18, I worked a closing shift at a small cafe in a grocery store. One of my regular customers, Tom, came in. Tom was a hugger, and he would come in and call out, Where's my girls? We all awkwardly hugged this 80-year-old man while he whispered, God bless you, in our ears. I hated Tom. He always held on a little too long and whispered a little too close. On this shift, I closed alone and Tom came in at about 4 p.m., which was not unusual. I dealt with his creepy behavior and got him his coffee and bagel. He was with his tired-looking wife this time who sat there silently while he asked me uncomfortable questions. He asked me what I had to do that night, if it was hard closing alone, what time I was off, and if I ever got scared walking to my car in the dark. I answered as friendly as I could, despite feeling uncomfortable. I would catch him staring at me often, it was okay though because I was off work at 7, so it wasn't a big deal. But then he didn't leave. His wife went home without him, and he just stayed, staring, for hours. I asked if there was anything else he needed, and he said no. He was just waiting for me to get off work. He wanted to walk me to my car because... Young girl shouldn't be in a dark parking lot alone. I told him it wasn't necessary and continued about my work, ignoring him, even as he stared. He left about 15 minutes before my shift ended, and I breathed a sigh of relief. I didn't think twice when I punched out and headed to my car. I grabbed my snow brush and began clearing my car, enjoying the quiet that's unique to a snowy night. Then I heard the crunching of footsteps behind me. I brushed it off since I was in a parking lot after all, but they got closer, past any car and directly towards my car, parked away from the others in employee parking. I looked, and it was Tom, maybe 50 feet away and smiling. He told me that I should have looked for him. He had been sitting outside waiting for me, and I should know it's dangerous for young girls to be alone in a parking lot at night. I began shaking. I tried to open my car door, but it was frozen shut due to the earlier storm. Tom came closer, calling me a stupid girl and asking God to forgive him. I debated running back into the store, but 
He was so old that he surely couldn't keep up, right? I didn't want to chance it, though. He could have been younger since I am a terrible judge of age and I'm not exactly fast myself considering my weight. So I stood my ground. I fumbled in my purse for my pepper spray, which thankfully attached to my keys. I told him to stay back. I had pepper spray and to go home to his wife. He glowered at me. We were about 15 feet apart then, and he was well within range. He called me a bitch, spat at me, and went back into the store. I got into my half-covered car and drove home terrified. When I got home, which was only a mile and a half away, I called the store and told them what had happened. They kicked Tom out and told him not to come back. He began cursing up a storm, and his wife had to come pick him up. A couple of years later, he ended up getting arrested for child pornography, but I don't know the details as I had moved away at that point. Can't say I'm sad to see him go, though. And here's a question for you. Have you ever had a creepy encounter that made your hair stand on end? Share your thoughts in the comments below.